This production was made possible through the collaboration of several members of Chase and Cab Saison, chili pepper enthusiasts and experts from across the nation. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Steve Sarman. I'm a friend of Miss Boyer's, and I live here locally in Huntington Beach. I'm a pepper grower and enthusiast. I like to eat peppers. I like to make hot sauce and make pepper powder for myself and my friends. I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I organize my pepper seeds. So most of my plants are grown from seed each year. I start them indoors under lights and as the plant gets tall enough in the right time of year, I move them outside so that they can grow naturally under natural light. So anyways, I have an Excel spreadsheet that I keep with all my peppers, all my pepper seeds. These are the names of the peppers. And we can focus, try to focus in so you can see a couple of them. And this is a column that tells me where they're located in my pepper seed binder. So let's use an example on my list of El Oro de Ecuador. That's a small orange little sweet pepper that I would imagine is probably grown in Ecuador or originally from Ecuador. So it's on, according to my, my page here, it's on page nine, slot one. Each page has nine slots. It's basically a baseball card page. So you can see them here. These are baseball card slots. So instead of baseball cards, I put seed packets. So we're gonna go to page nine, slot one, and you'll see I have this one here. I'll pull it out. And this is El Oro de Ecuador. Don't know if it's focusing for you or whether you can see it or not, but these are the little seeds. And this is how I start my plants every year. So that's how I organize my pepper seeds. I have approximately 170 to 180 varieties right now. Okay, we're back and we're outside in my yard with my pepper garden. I'm gonna show you a couple peppers. This one here, not quite ripe, but this is a Mad Hatter. Kind of resembles a hat. This is a sweet flavored pepper. I think I might have one down here that's a little bit smaller but almost ripe and I'll go ahead and uh, sample that one sweet flavor a little bit of heat at the end but not a lot this one here was created by a very popular pepper person in Texas. His name is Kangstar. The shape of these are not exactly like Kangstar intended on my plant, but this is called a Kangstar Peach Starkist. You can see a couple of them on the plant. I've got another one up here. These are <clears throat> Peach Starkist. And then these ones, these are the peppers that they make Tabasco hot sauce from. This is called a Tabasco pepper. And we'll come over here to a chocolate pepper. This one does not taste like chocolate. It's called Caramello pepper. They don't have much heat at all um good for cooking and whatnot a lot of floral flavor not much sweetness to it either and then we come over here to another chocolate this is a seven pot bbg chocolate these ones are very hot you wouldn't want to eat this by your by itself unless you are very used to eating hot stuff anyways there's a few of the peppers out of my out of my garden and I hope you enjoyed.
We go home. Hi guys, I'm Jason. Um, I have a small backyard garden and I'm going to show you the process that I go through to start some of my super hot pepper plants. I'm going to take you around. I also have um, just some regular uh, vegetables and regular peppers. I have jalapeno, habanero, tomatoes, um, some ghost peppers, and a Carolina Reaper plant. So hang with me and we'll walk through and we'll check these guys out and I'll sh show you the process about how getting your own pepper plant started. Now a lot of these plants haven't produced ripe peppers, but we can at least get an idea of where we're at. This is a red bell pepper that I have growing. See that guy there? And this is kind of a, a crossbreed. It was supposed to, I, it was a plant that I actually bought at Home Depot. And it has, I believe, two different plants in here. We have a bell pepper and we have a jalapeno. And it really makes some crazy looking peppers, like this little guy right here. Not sure, I'm guessing it's a jalapeno crossed with a bell pepper. But it's got some peppers that kind of look more like a bell pepper, but you can see how this pepper is elongated. But it yet, it still kind of looks like a bell pepper. It's pretty cool. There's this big guy. This is my habanero. Get in real close so you can see some of these guys. Really pretty. And here we have some cayenne. Love the shapes on these guys. They get real long and skinny and start twisting. Really cool. That guy there is the hottest pepper in the world. That's my Carolina Reaper. That would be a scorpion. Right there in the back, that's another Carolina Reaper. It's not producing any pods yet, but we'll get there. And over here, that is a Tabasco pepper plant. It puts out some real pretty colors. It almost looks like Christmas. And this is my proudest plant, that I, or the one I'm most proud of. This is ghost pepper. Now these guys are still green, but you can see there's a lot of them on there. So if you do your best, this is what you'll come out with. This is a scorpion pepper that's still green. And of course, jalapenos. Look at that guy. I see them all down there. All right. Okay, y'all. So to grow, to start out growing. You will need, of course, you'll need some seeds. And in my case, I'll be trying to grow the Purple Reaper. And you can see the little seeds in there. And those right there are the two I'm going to plant. And to do this, what I use is a little nursery, a little mini, mini nursery uh, that we can make a greenhouse effect with. It comes with a little cover, goes over the top, keeps them warm and cozy, and I use a heating pad. And it comes with a thermometer. It's upside down, I'm sorry. So what we'll do is dig a little hole. It doesn't have to be very deep. couple of your little seeds put them right there 
and just cover them up with a little bit of dirt. Not too much. They like to be close to the top of the soil. And of course, we'll add some water. And what I do from this point is put their cover on, set them on the heating pad, and we set our temperature they like it around 85 degrees when the seedlings are starting. So I usually set it for a little higher just to get it started because the temp sometimes does vary. So we'll leave that. And it has a little thermometer to put in there that you keep with your, with your pepper seeds that you put in the tray. And I'll show you what you'll get. Okay, guys, this is some of the plants that I have after I took them out from under the tray and put them underneath a grow light in my home. Um, these plants are a little big for the seedling trays, starting trays that I put them in, but that's okay. Um, these are King Star Lemon Starburst plants. You can see the new growth. They're pretty tall. We're going to transplant those out into solo cups soon. And the solo cup method that I use, like for this guy, you can see the pretty flowers on it. This is a yellow Trinidad scorpion. And it is big. So I'm hoping to get some peppers from this guy soon before he goes outside. Um, which might be a while because it's almost winter time here. We don't want to put him out in the cold. But I use double cups, and the reason why is because you can fill that with your nutrients or just water and pop this guy inside, and you can see the roots growing on that. You can drop it right down inside there, and you can place it in your grow light. This is what they look like under the grow light. They get all kinds of their their artificial sunlight and don't know but there you go brings it down and they stay very happy underneath that and I keep them under here until they're ready to go outside to get their real sunlight let them get big and strong okay guys we're gonna transplant this guy into my solo cups so what we'll do Take this and see the roots on that and just very carefully, sometimes you can push on the bottom, pull that guy out. Look at that. All right. And take this and this won't hurt on but we spray all that off. Look at that. Lay him down here. And I didn't explain this earlier, but the bottom of the cup, uh, sorry, I reuse my cups. I like to recycle. Cut little holes in the bottom so the roots can grow through. 
of my first solo cup before I fill it with dirt. down there in the bottom and we're gonna build his new house So, from this point, give him lots of water. And once you have that, like I said, this is the one with the holes in the bottom. You can see the water dripping out. And you take your other cup, and you can see I marked it death spiral this is a death spiral pepper um, and what I will do is I will like I said of course the nutrients and your water will go inside this cup and you'll take this cup with the holes in it and the plant inside the other and there you go and this little guy will go back underneath the grow light So I hope this video helped you um, decide how you want to do it. If you do want to grow super hots, it's it does take a lot of your time. And but the good thing is is that you can grow them anywhere. You can use buckets. You can um, put them on your back porch. You can do what I did. Um, I have of course all of the above, but um, I built a raised garden bed, as you can see there. And I have some that I've put on the ground, uh, basically a raised garden bed, but flipped upside down. And that way I can put, you can see it kind of sitting over there on the, on this side. There's a uh, tarp that I can put when it gets too hot. Cause I'm in South Texas, it gets over a hundred degrees down here. So the uh, peppers need shade like we do, you know, we get sunburnt, the plants are going to burn also, especially when it's really, really hot outside. So I have a tarp that I can stretch over. Um, you can also see it there. You take this and pull it over the top. Like so. So I hope this was informative. I haven't done many videos like this. This will be my first one showing off my garden and my plants. Um, I hope you've learned a little bit. And if you have any questions, always just send me a message. I got you. If I know what to do, I'll tell you. And if I don't, I'll ask somebody that does. So thank everybody for watching my video and um, I'll see y'all on the next one. Hi, I'm Jeremiah, uh, AKA Bullfrog from the Chasing Capsaicin Pepper community. Uh, what I have here today is uh, a pepper haul from my 380 plants. Um, some of my favorites would definitely include the mustard scorpion, the Brazilian starfish yellows, the Brazilian starfish reds um, are probably some of my favorites. Uh, what we do with these peppers is we make pepper sauces, uh, rubs, and also hot sauce uh, with each individual variety of pepper. 
So uh, I'm definitely a hobbyist. Hopefully at some point get to turn into a real pepper farmer. Well, I hope you kiddos enjoyed looking at my little stash here. And God bless y'all. Hey guys, this is Pat from Fireman is Peppers and we're gonna learn about hot sauce today. The four main ingredients in a hot sauce are gonna be peppers, it can be any color, any kind. We also have a big orange bell pepper back here that I forgot to mention. So we got peppers, vinegar, onions, and garlic, and salt most of the time. But what we have here are a bunch of different colored peppers and each pepper is very hot and to make a whole batch of hot sauce you only need a couple. These are all called super hot peppers. Here's the different colors that they have. Red, chocolate, peach, yellow, white, and this looks kind of yellow but when they ripen they, they change colors sometimes. Green and purple. As you can see here, I have a couple varieties that I've already made. There's green, red, yellow, and purple or blue. They're all different flavors, but now I need an orange sauce. So I'm gonna walk you through the process. Slice the big pepper up, take out the seeds. As you can see, I didn't cut it up very small, but that's okay, because it's all gonna be blended anyway. And the onion. Then we have garlic. I chopped that up pretty small so that the flavor can seep into the, the mix a little bit better. And there's the second clove of garlic all chopped up. We're gonna throw that in there. Next we have some mango. So I know what you might be thinking. Fruit in a hot sauce? Yeah, it's actually a common thing to add fruit to hot sauce because it it kind of balances the heat with the sweet and uh, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. You don't need too much, otherwise if you add a lot of fruit it turns into what people would call a dessert sauce. That's just mainly sweet with just a little bit of heat. I want mainly heat with just a little bit of sweet for this one. And then we have our vinegar. There's many, many different types of vinegar that you can use but tonight I'm gonna to use apple cider. Some other options are white vinegar, balsamic vinegar, and champagne vinegar. They all add a different flavor to your sauce. So this'll add a little bit of a sweetness and fruitiness that I want in this one. Then we have some carrots. And now the most important part of any hot sauce the hot peppers. Here on the left we have a yellow Carolina Reaper. In the middle is something called a Jay's Peach Ghost Scorpion. And on the right a Bane Strain Peach. This is all the hot that I'm going to put in that whole pot which I have over here of everything else. It's all I need. I don't want it too hot. I want normal people who don't like melting their faces off to enjoy this with me. So this is going to be added now. Can't forget the salt. That's enough for now. I can add as I go. All right, as you can see, we moved over to the stove. Let's get this baby cranked up. What you wanna do is bring it to a boil. And once it starts boiling, you want to lower it to like a medium or low heat. And you want to simmer for about 15 or 20 minutes. And you want all of it to get a little softer and all the flavor of all the ingredients to blend together nicely. I'll update you as it goes. All right, we got some boiling action going on. I'm going to turn it down to about a four. Still simmering. Let's turn it down just a little bit. Alright. So we want this to cook low and slow. 
We don't want to burn the ingredients in there or cook them too much. We just want the flavors, like I said, to blend together well. So I'll update you in a little bit and we'll go on to the next step of the process. All right, it's been about 15, 20 minutes. What I'm gonna do now is put everything in a blender, mix it all up, and be right back. All right, we're back. As you can see, I blended everything up in the blender. Nice consistency too. Um, now at this point, you can be done, but what I like to do is cook it a little bit longer and the flavors blend together a little bit better. So I'm gonna do that and then I will update you on the next part of the process. All right, we're back. I let it cool for about an hour or so to let the temp go down. So this is the final process of hot sauce. If you want to make it shelf stable, which means that it will not spoil if you don't put it in the refrigerator, you have to make sure that the pH is lower than four. Uh, some people say around 3.5 or 3.4. What that means is that the liquid is so acidic that any bacteria or fungus or mold or any microorganisms cannot live in it because it's not a suitable environment for it. So, I'm going to take out this meter. All right, we have it right here. And I'm gonna stick it in. And wow, it is right on the money. First time. I promise I did not edit this video to get it looking like that. But that's about a perfect pH and now I can can it up, heat it up, doing hot water canning, which is just putting it in a jar and then putting it in uh, another pot full of water and heating it up so it creates like a vacuum seal. All right, that about does it. Oh, hey, I'm back. How do you guys like to see it all jarred up in the final product? There it is. Nice orange sauce. All right, take care, guys. Hello, my name is Ethan Rivera. I'm an amateur artist that specializes in pepper-related artworks and graphic designs. Here I have a pepper that I drew digitally using my iPad, and I'm going to go over kind of step-by-step -step on how I came uh, to complete this piece. I do have to say that this is a time lapse of this artwork, so please don't get discouraged because it's going to go by really quick and I do not draw this fast, so don't worry. This, this pepper took the better part of a week to draw, so we start beginning with a reference photo. Reference photo I found online. Uh, I really liked it because the shadows and highlights were very distinct, and that is what I wanted to practice. Uh, with this drawing so what I do is I start with tracing an outline of the pepper and tracing all the highlights so I know where they are then I start by picking colors off the color wheel that best resemble the colors from the real pepper and I start shading them in uh, the darker for shadows and lighter colors for highlights and then I use a tool called a smudge tool and I use it throughout the whole piece. Um, and what the smudge tool does is it blends colors very subtly. So they kind of just mesh and blend together. Because uh, when you're doing a realistic drawing, there are no really harsh, dedicated outlines like a, a cartoon character would have. So you want the colors and shadows to kind of blend together um, naturally now uh, i go around and you want to make sure that you have the same attention to detail throughout the whole pepper so you want to make sure that you're being consistent in how your your drawing your strokes with your colored pencil are all the same now, when i come down through here to the bottom part or the, i guess the top part of the tail of this pepper um, this is was tricky because it's very textured and I wanted to try to recreate that texture 
Uh, as you can see, I kind of go back and forth and add and remove different highlights to try to make sure I, I got that exact texture um, that was in that pepper. I want it to look as realistic as possible. As we move on to the farther left of the pepper, uh, the, the shadows are really important on this side because there's a, a lobe uh, right there that I wanted to make sure that I was differentiating between this section and the next and this shadow along that edge was very important. Uh, the smudge tool again making all those shadows and highlights blend in without being too harsh, uh, too solid of lines and as you can see like I, I color in a section and then I'm blending right all through here I use that smudge tool and help those colors just blend together so they're all one piece almost, almost instead of separate colors, uh, splotches that are on, on there. And we come down through the bottom of the tail here and that was actually pretty challenging to make sure that it was highlighting almost like a spotlight right on that section and it faded into the top of the pepper there. So now we're moving on to the stem and the calyx of the pepper. Uh, this was different challenging because it's a different total different shape than the rest of the pepper uh, it's more of a cylinder so that has a totally different shadow pattern uh, than a pepper like the reaper here with all the texturized body so i know that was fast um, but that is a pepper um, from beginning to end um, it takes practice so please don't get discouraged um, like I said this was three or four minutes of a drawing that actually took four to five days uh, and I didn't draw it four to five days straight I had to take breaks because I was being you know just at some points I thought I was getting overwhelmed with the minute details and I was becoming a perfectionist and I just needed to step away a minute um, which is totally fine to do you, you know you don't have to pressure yourself to get something done right away um, because then, then your artwork shows that you're, you're, you're rushing it or you're, you're putting too much thought into it. You kind of just have to let it be its own thing and, and do it naturally. Uh, that way it shows through your artwork. Um, so I know that was quick, like I said, but feel free to definitely reach out, uh, ask any questions you have about art. Uh, I'm hoping I can answer them. Uh, your teacher does know how to get a hold of me, so uh, definitely, if you know, if you guys have class questions, I can make another video for you guys on artwork, specifically talking about things that you want to know. Um, I'm definitely uh, would would look forward to doing something like that. So, yeah, please do not hesitate to reach out, and I, I want to thank you guys for listening and watching, and I want to thank your teacher for asking me to do this. This was a great opportunity. And uh, keep drawing, guys. All right, have a good day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Jared Smith. They call me Farmer J, and this is Pepper Life. In this plot right here, I've got 140 plants with 85 varieties, everything from jalapeno to Carolina Reapers. Now, today, and your wonderful teacher, Ms. Boyer, has asked us to show you a little bit of what we do. So after uh, I grow these all summer long, I sell these peppers and I make hot sauces out of them. Different kind of hot sauces, everything from jalapeno hot sauces that just ting a little bit to Carolina Reaper sauces that'll burn your face off. Now today I'm gonna take out inside the hottest chili in the world, the Carolina Reaper. Now let's go ahead and pick one. I found a doozy, check this guy out. There he is. This is the Carolina Reaper. Now we're gonna take you inside to the table and cut her open and show you what's inside. Let's break down the anatomy of a chili pepper. We're inside now and now we got the Carolina Reaper here and boy, look how dangerous it looks. See, we call this right here a stinger. All right, so let's, let's go over the different parts of it. This is gonna be the pedicle. All right, and this is gonna be the calyx. All right, we got the exocarp. All right, and those are the outside parts. And like I said, we call this the stinger. So it looks really, really painful. And we're gonna cut it open and check out the insides. So I'll get my knife out here. 
And this is one of my favorite parts. You get to see everything. All right, now we got that open. Check this out. Now see, look here. You see this oil right here? We call this capsaicin. This is what makes the pepper hot. Now, I was planning on showing you that here in a minute, but since it all ran out, I was planning on, I went ahead and showed you all of that. All right, so we'll show you this part. Now right here we have the placenta, okay? This is what produces all the seeds. This is the female part of the pepper. And the seeds are what's going to reproduce a new pepper. All right, and of course in there is gonna be the capsaicin glands. And that's what produces all this oily stuff called capsaicin. And this is what makes the pepper hot. All right, and then we got the endocarp. That's the inside skin of a pepper. And the mesocarp, that's the inside of the pepper that's right next to the outside. And the ex outside, if you remember earlier, that's the exocarp. Now, the bottom of this right here, uh, at the stinger, we're going to call that, this the apex. All right? So the pedicle, the stalk of the stem, move this back over here. The stalk of the stem of a single uh, flower or fruit, the stem or branch of the main stem that holds a group of pedicles is called a peduncle. Isn't that a funny word? Peduncle. <laughs> All right, so this is the calyx. Once again, this part of the stem composed of modified leaves called specels. Usually green specels function as a protection for the lower flower and bud and often as support of the petals when in bloom. All right, so let's check this out. So here's one of the seeds. All right, the seeds, this is the reproductive part of the plant. So as y'all know, when we put these seeds in the ground, in about 14 to 21 days, these seeds will sprout. So let's move that out of the way. All right, so the inside right here, this is the placenta and it holds the seeds. And it's, this is where the largest concentration of heat or capsaicin is found. Uh, found along the placenta that holds the seeds often referred to as the pith removing all the portion of this pepper will reduce how hot this pepper gets but anyways i'm sure the miss annie can show y'all anything else y'all want to know about a pepper but i wanted to take y'all inside and show y'all different parts now watch this look at all that oil that came out so this would be a very very hot pepper well i hope y'all enjoyed this little video and uh once again y'all have a wonderful day hi miss boyer and her class of panthers my name is randy and i'm from louisiana have you ever wondered what makes peppers so hot it's the oils found in them known as capsaicin these oils are measured by the scoville scale let's talk about them Here we have a bell pepper. These are good for eating raw, maybe in a salad. People cook with them a little bit. They have a zero rating on the Scoville scale. So there's no heat at all. This is a poblano chili. These are great for cooking also. They have a little bit of heat. They're ranged about 1,500 on the Scoville scale. To your jalapenos, they range about 5,000 on the Scoville scale. Great for making salsas. This is a Serrano chili. And it's about 10,000 on a Scoville scale. So if you want your salsa a little bit hotter, you'd use these. These guys are out of my garden. They're called a bird's eye chili. And it's about the size of a pea, but it has a Scoville scale of 50,000. These guys here, are the ahi chili, and they're from Peru. 
and their Scoville rating is about 70,000, so a little bit hotter. Then there's a big jump when you get into Habaneros. These guys are about 300,000, so much, much hotter. To your ghost peppers and crossbreeds like this one here is a ghost pepper crossed with a scorpion pepper and it ranges about 1 million on the Scoville scale. Also out of my garden, chocolate maruga inside of that guy. in here these guys are about 1.5 million on the Scoville scale very hot to the world famous Carolina Reaper these guys measure about 2 million on the Scoville scale making them the hottest pepper in the world. Did you know that you would have to eat 400 jalapenos to get the same heat level as one Carolina Reaper? 400 of these guys to get one of these guys. Hope you guys are having a nice day and appreciate you for sticking around and tuning in. Y'all take it easy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, be full of all ages. I come with you live and in living color here in Jacksonville, Arkansas at the Gilbert Compound. We have a special guest in the house today, Ms. Boyer. Why are we here on Halloween? Well, actually, Bob the Voice Gilbert, it looks like you are Captain Hook today, and I am Maleficent. Actually, I am Ms. Maleficent Boyer. My student called me that all day yesterday. So anyways, um, let me do a shout out to all the children in my life. First, my students, um, my Panthers, my best buddies, this is for you. Um, Annalise, I love you. Naya. Barnacle boy, whoop, whoop. That's so cute. <laughs> and all the rest of the children that I love. So why we're here is because about mm, three weeks ago, I, I, it was October 9th, um, I was doing calendar instruction with my students and um, I always share with them the like weird holidays for the day. And that day it was national hoagie sub hero sandwich day and my students were like listening or whatever and then my one student said well I want to make a villain sandwich so I'm like all right what's in a villain sandwich <laughs> what is in a villain sandwich all right so he goes to tell me the ingredients he's like two pieces of bread ketchup mustard Ketchup. The spicy sauce made by Miss Boyer, lettuce, and the hottest chili pepper in the world from the Panthers Garden, which is the garden I've been raising with them. So, and I got this from you. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you do have a Carolina. You have one of the hottest chili peppers from the Panthers Garden. Uh, yes, I do. So anyways, I run down and I grab a bag of um, the hottest chili peppers in the world and I show it to him. I'm like, you mean these? And he looks and he's very serious and he says, but only one, one Carolina Reaper is enough. And I'm like, whoa, you're getting technical here, kid. So <laughs> oh. that was Larry. Shout out to Larry. <laughs> hey, hey, Larry. Larry. So uh, anyways, a couple of days go by and I'm not thinking anything of this. And they're, they start asking me, so are you going to eat the villain sandwich? And I'm like, mm. 
I said, you know, I've never eaten a whole Carolina Reaper before. I said, I only cook with them. <laughs> I've never eaten one either. Look, my nose is already running at nose. <laughs> And then they all started encouraging me like that I should eat the sandwich. And Larry, the sweet egg bound that he is, and he, he's like, you're the only person that I know that can tolerate so much heat. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> he said the word tolerate, you know? And he said, if you can eat a ghost pepper, you can eat a Carolina Reaper, which isn't necessarily true as we all know. There's probably like twice as much capsaicin in a Carolina Reaper, the substance that makes the chili pepper hot um, as compared to a ghost pepper. So about, anyways, about half, I guess. Right. So anyways, then, he, then they go on and they say they have faith in me and they believe I can handle the heat. They believe I can handle the spice in it. And I'm like, oh. And it just, it kept, it kept going. So even another day, I'm like, you guys are mean. And Larry said, I like you. I'm giving you courage. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. you're the spiciest person we know. You're the spicy teacher. And the yesterday, teacher. yesterday I, asked, I asked them if they were over it. And Larry said he was not going to be over it till I eat it. So... <laughs> The other students agree with them. So here I am. I care about my students. I have a soft spot in my heart for them. And it matters to me that they have faith in me. So I'm going to be brave for them. And um, I figure what better, what better day to eat a villain sandwich than on Halloween dressed as villains. Right, Captain Hook? Absolutely, Miss... Maleficent Voyeur. Maleficent. Um, by the way, Captain Hook, do you know what movie Captain Hook comes from? Peter Pan. Woo! You did quite Absolutely. well on that Disney trivia question. How about, do you know what movie Maleficent comes from? Well, it's from her name. <laughs> Maleficent. Maleficent is actually the villainous in Sleeping Beauty. And she also has her own movie. movie. Yeah, Maybe she has her own movie. Yes. Um, Angelina okay, how Jolie. Eat the villain sandwich. How are we going to make this? Well, um, you know, I'm still scared. <laughs> All right. So, do we put the mayonnaise on, or not the mayonnaise, the mustard on first? The ketchup? Well, or is it not? So, well, I have my mustard and um, ketchup mixed together. Um, you do? So, I have my two pieces of bread. Let's just let's put the con let's put the um the mustard and the ketchup on one side and put the spicy sauce on the other side. Yes, ma'am. This Here's is gonna my be spicy fun. sauce. It um I made it using my hatch chili habanero hot sauce I had made. Well, I had a uh, I had a fellow chili head send me this this um, sauce last year. I I apologize for not remembering who he is, but it's called uh, Mary Crumpus. And this is some really hot stuff. Mm. It's the first hot sauce that was ever sent to me. So I'm pretty honored. Mary Crumpus. All right. You add your Mary Crumpus to your villain sandwich. Absolutely. It's going to be almost as hot as the Carolina Reaper, if I remember it correctly. I am just going to use the sauce that I have. <laughs> I did a video on it too. So I am preparing my villain sandwich and I am preparing to die. <laughs> You're going to be perfectly fine. I have faith in you as well. Aww. Me and Larry have that in common. That's so sweet. You know, they all were encouraging me to do this and they really are they really mean a lot to me <laughs> i can tell that's why i'm always willing to help out all right so do you have your Ooh. mustard ketchup and hot sauce on your villain sandwich that i do check it out there's the ketchup and the mustard 
And here is the crumpus sauce. I can smell it. It's, it's, it's. Whoo. All right. Do you have lettuce? I do have lettuce. All right. Add the lettuce. I have this red sales lettuce that I got from Gary. Um, he gave me some plants so that I could um, grow a winter garden with my students. And it's purple. I don't know what's up with calling things the wrong color, but it just happens with chili peppers and other vegetables. I think that's a very nice, uh, a very nice lettuce. I wish I had some of that. Instead, I have this Walmart special. Walmart special will work. There's no specific lettuce in this recipe. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, why is my nose running? Because <laughs> peppers That's are the last hot. time. It's so strange. We have All right, even, uh... so my sandwich is prepared aside from the Carolina Reaper. So I am going to cut my Carolina Reaper in half. Oh, those are specific instructions from Larry. The Carolina Reaper has to be cut in half. And I even asked him, because I'm like, give me, give me something, kid. I'm like, um, can, do we cook the Carolina Reaper? No, it's supposed to be raw. I'm like, should we take the seeds out and stuff? No, mm -hmm. seeds and stuff stay in. I'm like, but what, what knife are you using today? I have my favorite purple knife. <laughs> favorite purple knife. Uh -huh. from, I actually cool. got it at the knife store in um, Tennessee. It's, um, oh, I have, right. it's like, I don't know, three stories. I looked through every single knife till I found a purple one. It's a buff knife. That's cool. And you're using gloves too. That's always a good mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, so um, by the way, students never point a knife at anybody and also, also always point it away from yourself and wear gloves if you're working with chili peppers, especially the Carolina Reaper. Especially, chili peppers. Mm -hmm. especially these hot ones. Even a jalapeno can hurt you. So yes, it can. So I am I'm putting normal. my Carolina Reaper in half as instructed. We can take the stem off, can't we? Yes, take the stem off. All right, just checking. I didn't want to. I didn't want to get Larry mad. We couldn't take the stem off. Whew. I think I'm going to need a glove for my mouth after this. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly. I don't either. All I know is this stuff's hot. Look at that. This is your pepper. Look it at is that. My pepper. Oh, it's looking pretty intimidating. That is extremely intimidating. All right, so place your two halves on the sandwich as instructed. Yes, ma'am. I am going to take a picture of this for posterity, whatever it does to me, I will have the photo. Hey, right, let's, uh, let's do a screenshot if we can. Can we do a screen? Can we do a? I think we can. That's my sandwich. That's kind of scary. Okay, you ready? That's, I'm ready. I got it. We're good. All right, so I'm going to put this together. Wait, I've got I it wait, wait, wait. I didn't take the screenshot yet. No, I'll do that later. <laughs> I can do the okay, screenshot I got it. later. All right. I'm very terrified here. Okay, put it together. We got to eat it. This um, clip is only supposed to be two to eight minutes long. Okay. Hey, right, before I do this, I uh, I wanted to give a shout out to my grandkids, Sean and Susie. I love y'all very much. And uh, if I don't see you on Thanksgiving, I love you. Aww. You ready? Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. We have to finish it, too. Oh, that's hot. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. How are you feeling? <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's rough. Oh my gosh. That's that really hurts. You can thank my Panthers, my students, my best buddies. Oh, Larry, you are 
Oh. Larry, you came up with a delicious sandwich recipe. Oh, man. That's the best villain sandwich I ever ate. This is definitely the best villain sandwich I've ever ate. Ooh. My mouth is literally on fire, though. Well, we both ate the villain sandwich. <laughs> My mouth is on fire, too. Children, do not try this at home. Yeah, my eyes are tearing. Oh, wow. I must finish the sandwich. Oh, I finished my sandwich. Mine was bigger. Whatever. <laughs> no, you had yours cut out. <clears throat> my eyes are tearing. My mouth is burning. My throat is burning. I think the bread helped a lot. I'm driving. <sighs> My nose is running. Try to breathe out of your nose. It helps. Oh, um, I would like to say for the record that there was a really good Carolina Reaper. Uh, Mine. <laughs> that is really hot. I mean, I know Carolina Reapers are hot, but that's hot. That was that was a really good taste in pepper. Go ahead with what you were saying. I was just saying it was a really good pepper. Thank you. That's really hot. Good job. All right. So. Wow. Still talk. Me too. I'm doing great. I mean, it's 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 painful, but you know we did do the one chip challenge and it didn't even phase us. Yeah, this so, is the same as the one chip challenge. <laughs> this is way hotter. Way hotter than the one chip challenge. This is Larry's villain sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the villain sandwich. I'd like to also say hi to Rihanna, to Sophia, to Danny, and to Jaden. <laughs> hey. And it seems my friend... Hey. It seems, wow. my friend, to my students, my Panthers, my best buddies, I want you to know that I care about you, and I thank you for having faith in me and giving me courage. You helped me to be brave, and I'm grateful to be your teacher. We ate the villain sandwich. Woo! And I'm, I'm grateful that you shared this with me. Thank you so much, Ms. Boyer. Peace Ms. out, Boyer. Boys. Peace out. Peace out. Ms. Ben Ms. Maleficent Boyer, signing out. Absolutely. Hey. I'd like to express my gratitude to each one of you from Chasing Capsaicin for contributing your time, energy, creativity, and expertise to this educational chili pepper project for my students. Thank you.